After the gate was opened, Jack was welcomed by a warm atmosphere. The environment here was indeed good as it gave a different vibe from the one that he'd just experienced at the gate. In other words, after passing through the gate, it was like he had entered a different world. At the gate, he could feel the majestic and domineering vibe. But once he got inside, he found that the atmosphere was warm and elegant. Even while still at the gate, he could clearly see the lake in the distant few hundred meters. The lake itself had a diameter of about one kilometer. There were various plants that were in the lake that made it look beautiful from the flowers that were floating there. He could see that their flowers like water lily. These lilies had been well arranged as he could see that they were divided in terms of colors. Closer to the edge of the lake, he could see that there were red lilies. Then followed by purple, orange and finally blue. This was at the side of the gate. The other sides of the lake had other flowers and plants that made the lake look like an artistic painting. There were several white swans that were swimming in the lake. Jack couldn't help but appreciate the beauty and elegance of this place. The bentaiga moved slowly at the side of the lake that had been tiled. Jack could see the two mansions that were on the opposite sides of the lake. They were at the shore of the lake, to be specific. So as to make sure that he wouldn't be missing anything, Jack immediately headed to the parking area. He was already familiar about the setting of this place through the model that he'd seen back at the real estate agency. Just like they had told him back then, he found that the parking lot was indeed big. It was as big as three basketball courts. The area was 35 asterisk 36. The floor was tiled by the interlocking road tiles and was painted royal blue. There was a roof on top but their walls there were kind of modern. They could rise and fall. If they rose, then the parking area would immediately become an enclosed space. Once they were taken down, it would be an open space with a roof. The walls were controlled by a remote. Furthermore, these walls were quite sturdy. After parking the car in the parking lot, Jack who was accompanied by Sabrina immediately began moving around. Sabrina did the introduction as she had been here a few times before. This time, she wanted to take as much time as possible so that she could enjoy the place. After all, who doesn't like luxury? She took Jack around the place showing him how big the place was. The garden was as big as five basketball courts. There were several swings and chairs where a person could relax. Jack nodded as he felt the cool and relaxing breeze in the garden that was accompanied by a sweet scent of flowers in the garden. He was tempted to stay there for a while but he held back the urge. After all, it was already afternoon and the sun was really hot thus the temperatures were high. After getting out of the garden, they headed towards the mansions. He found that the mansions looked majestic just like one would expect of a palace. After all, these two mansions were called Prince and Princess Palace. So, they had to give the vibe of a palace. One was painted blue with golden dragon paintings added to the walls. They looked lively and added the domineering and majestic vibe to the mansion. This was the palace that Sabrina introduced as the Prince Palace. After entering the mansion, he found that everything inside was a work of art. Although he wasn't a person that followed artistic works so much, still, there were times that one had to appreciate good works if it was seen. The decoration of the whole mansion was really designed for royalty. The bedrooms had big beds. The kitchen was fully equipped. The only thing that made Jack feel was lacking was the fact that this place was so empty. If he stayed here alone, it surely would be lonely. But, what could he do as he didn't have a girlfriend yet? The princess mansion was the opposite of the prince mansion. Unlike the prince mansion that gave a majestic vibe, the princess mansion gave the gentle and warm vibe. It was painted green, complementing the garden that was just behind it. Even the decorations were kind of gentle ones. It was all about beauty of nature and other things within this mansion. Just like the prince mansion, this mansion was fully equipped. Water, electricity, furniture and other equipment that a person needed to survive were there. The only thing that he would need would be to get food and he would be able to stay. The bridge that was connecting the two mansions was an artistic work. The design was pleasing to the eye. Furthermore, the bridge was placed in a position that one could have a clear view of the lake below. The reason for this was because, the floor of the bridge was made of glass. The glass was transparent but was sturdy enough that it could support a few hundred kilograms. Jack felt that the palace should have been worth more than just 38 million dollars. After all, not only were the mansions big and luxurious, even the space that came with them was bigger. But he wouldn't complain about saving a few dollars. 
After seeing that everything was said, Jack immediately sent the address to the Bentley shop so that they could send his cars here. The area of the mansion was so big in that there would he no problem fitting two dozen cars. Although not all the cars that he was planning on buying were going to fit in the parking lot, there was still a lot of space that was tiled. So, there was nothing to worry about the cars destroying the vegetation. During the time of departure from the mansion, all the security guards were called over. Then Jack was introduced as the new owner of the palace. The guards saluted him in respect while their eyes were filled with admiration. These guards were all members of a security company called Good Vision Security Limited. They were popular in the country and that was the reason as to why they were given the job of protecting the palace. While on their way towards Homescope Properties Limited, Jack asked for the information of the designer of the palace. He had liked the way that the place was designed and he wanted the company that was in charge of it to help in designing his enterprise's logo and stores. After taking her back to the agency, Jack changed his destination to the municipal that was in charge of the stores in the city. He didn't want to buy things and start it over, he wanted to purchase the stores plus the stock and employees. If there were any changes that needed to be carried out, that would happen later. At least for now, the most important thing to do was to get more groceries. As he thought of this, he asked the system, by the way system, I don't want to believe that the grocery store hasn't yet earned a dollar. Why is it that till this time there's nothing about the income being multiplied? Ding! The income will be multiplied immediately if you're present. But if others are going to take care of the work for you, then the multiplication will happen at the end of the day, week, month, year or trading period. Jack nodded. He then asked, the store, at what period would the multiplication happen? Ding! Since the store is still smaller than small, then the multiplication will happen at the end of the day as soon as the store is closed. If the stores that you're going to open get linked in that they share the same payment system, then things might change depending on circumstances. Jack was left speechless by the system once again. What was smaller than small again? After sighing, he decided to ignore that comment. Jack decided to wait for evening then. So, for now, he put his focus back to expanding his influence. He got to the municipal office that was in charge of business in the city and then inquired about acquiring the grocery stores. You want to purchase the grocery stores? The officer in charge of the purchase and sales of the stores in the city asked. They were inside the office. Yes, if there are people that want to sell their grocery stores, then I would buy them. Then if there are those that can be asked to sell, I'm willing to pay a reasonable price. Of course, I'm going to take the stock together with the employees. The changes will happen according to my taste, Jack explained. I get it. So, currently, in the entire city, there are about 14 grocery stores that are on sale. They still have stock but not that much. The employees are still there too. So, would you like to rent the stores and buy the stock or would you like to buy everything? The man asked. I want everything to be transferred to my name. That means that the store, the stock and the employees, the logbooks and the past dealings of the store should be left behind too because I don't want the business to be influenced by the transfer, Jack replied. If that's the case, then it will take some time for us to complete the procedures, the man said. Is there any that can be completed today? If there's, then I'd like to prioritize them. Jack said after a moment of thought. Currently, those whose procedures can be completed on this day are seven. They are all located closer to the heart of the city but not the center. Their location is good for business and there isn't that much competition. After looking through some documents, the man said. So, how much would it cost to get the procedures done as fast as possible? Jack asked. He was willing to spend to earn. MMH. The total cost of the stores together with the current stock would be at least $5,700,000. We will need to do further calculations according to what they have now. The man said as he looked through the records on the computer. It doesn't matter, you help me complete the procedure with the amount that you've stated as the base price. Jack waved his hand. He had been moving around the whole day and he wanted to get a rest. So, he wanted to complete the procedures faster. Immediately Mr. Jack. The man replied before he began making a few calls. Jack decided to stay there and wait for all the procedures to be carried out. This was a government office. So, the procedures that would have required a long time could be completed faster than if he went to private companies. After all, there were some processes that required an official's approval. Just like he had expected, the process only took slightly over an hour. During this hour, 
The only thing that Jack could do was to play with his phone. After all, he couldn't just stay idle for a whole hour. During this time, he had sent a text message to ask George about the delivery. He had said that the Cascadia Freightliner had arrived at the store and he was currently on his way to delivering the grocery products that Jack had paid for. Jack was now getting assured that in the evening today, he would get more than 10 million in terms of income. The previous day, he had gotten a million. That was considering the fact that there were no vegetables which were the grocery's main specialty. That, together with the seven that he was going to acquire at this time, there would be no issue in getting the 10 million. As he was still playing a game on his phone, he heard the sound of footsteps approaching. Before long, the door of the office was opened before Zack stepped inside. Zack was the one that was attending to Jack. Is it done? Jack asked. Yes Mr. Jack. Everything is done. The only procedure that's required would be your signature. Zack replied as he handed to Jack seven different documents. Jack received them. He found that they were the agreement of ownership. There were also ownership certificates of the shops that he had just purchased. He had already given his details and the bank account number. So, the income that would be received on this day forth would be transferred to his account. After seeing that there was nothing wrong with the contracts, he immediately signed his name. Then, he gave his bank card. Zack immediately swiped the card and Jack entered the pin to complete the transaction. Jack didn't blink when he was paying. The end price was a little lower than before as it seemed that the stock had reduced. The total cost was $5,580,000. This total was rounded up after a small 2% discount. Now, Jack's balance was $1,930,086. He then got up, ready to leave as he had already finished what had brought him here. Mr. Jack, if I may be presumptuous a little bit, may I ask if you're a member of Alfonso family of Crystal City? Zack asked when he saw that Jack was done. Jack was surprised by this question. But after a moment, he understood why that question had been asked. After all, although he was no longer a member of Alfonso family, he couldn't change some details on his birth certificate, driving license nor in his ID. He could only continue using them as they were currently. So, on his ID, Zack had seen that Jack's full name was Jack Alfonso. During the introduction, Jack only said that Zack could call him Jack and he didn't mention his surname. That was why Zack decided to call him Mr. Jack, as a show of courtesy. According to what he knew, Jack was supposed to be called Mr. Alfonso. But, since Jack didn't seem to want to use the name, then Zack could enforce it. Not really, Jack replied before exiting the office. Oh I see, Zack said, more to himself than Jack, since Jack said that he wasn't a member of Alfonso family from Crystal City then it might be another Alfonso family. After getting out of the office, Jack wanted to visit the shops and see the changes that would need to happen. But upon seeing that it was already close to 5 in the evening, he decided that he would be visiting the stores the following morning. After all, when it reached 5 in the evening, that would be the business peak hours. He wasn't ready to disturb the business at all. So, the only change that had occurred in these 7 stores was the account number that would be receiving the income. As for the contracts like the supply contract or purchase contract, they would need to negotiate once again. After all, the terms of the previously signed contract was according to the previous owners, so, he would have to state his own terms. As he was thinking of these things, he failed to pay attention to where he was going to for a moment and ran into someone. It seemed that this person was in some kind of a hurry as she was rushing towards the office while almost jogging. Just as she was going to fall, Jack stretched his hand and held her by her waist. Then, the gazes of the two met. It seemed that time had frozen at this moment. What a beautiful girl! Jack thought to himself as he stared at the emerald green eyes that were staring at him in both confusion and surprise. The face with a thin layer of makeup of the girl in his hands was like a well-carved sculpture. Big eyes, long eyelashes, small nose, thin red lips, an oval chin long black hair that was shining in from the reflection of the lightning in the building. In terms of beauty rating, she would be rated at 98. This was a great beauty. For some strange reason, Jack's heart that had never been moved began beating in a strange rhythm. There was a kind of special feeling that was attracting him to this girl. And for some reason, he didn't hate the feeling but strangely wanted to embrace it. What a handsome man! The girl exclaimed in her mind. She was having something urgent to take care of in this government office. 
She was rushing in that she forgot that she wasn't the only person that could be moving in the building and ended up in a man's arms. After a moment of confusion, she focused her gaze at his blue eyes that were staring at her with some kind of emotion that she couldn't read. The handsome face, well-curved cheekbones, sharp eyebrows, the determined and stubborn aura, the special silver hair, this made the man that was holding her look like a handsome work of art. She was drowned in the eyes that were staring at her in that she forgot to get out of his hands. She could feel his strong hands wrapped around her waist. If this was another time, she would have definitely slapped him for touching her. But, this time, she was lost and had lost her composure. And to make it worse, for the first time since she could remember, she was feeling shy. This was exactly against what she was during a normal situation or when facing other men. Ahem. At this time, a gentle cough woke the two out of their daze. The two then separated from each other but their eyes still stared into the other's eyes. Seeing that the two were still staring at each other, the lady that had just coughed spoke, Madam, we're getting late. Oh, only then did the lady snap out of it as she threw Jack a last glance and left with her personal assistant. Jack also got back to his senses at this times. He then stared as the lady left. Although there were two of them, for some reason, he could only see one. As she left, in her female official business suit, her bold and confident steps gave the vibe of a boss lady. Jack stared at her till she disappeared from his vision. It was only then that he came back to his thoughts of what he was supposed to do. As he walked out of the government building, he thought to himself, that's really strange. This strange feeling, I don't know why she gave me this somehow familiar feeling. But, I guess I can forget about it for now. If we meet in the future, I'll see what this is all about. He got into his bentaiga and drove towards one of the grocery stores. He wanted to purchase some foodstuffs so that he could get food in the mansion. He was going to spend the night there after all. In about 10 minutes, he arrived in front of a grocery store. It was called Comest Grocers. It was far bigger than Alphix grocery store that Jack had bought the previous day. Jack didn't come here for business. This, he entered the store alongside the customers that had began increasing in number as it was time for people to get back from home. He picked rice, flour, eggs, sugar, salt, a kilogram of beef, garlic, pepper, tomatoes and other things. The good thing about this store was the fact that it was like a mini supermarket that dealt with grocery products. There were shopping baskets that Jack used to carry all the things that he'd chosen. He then went to the counter to make the payment. He could see that there were three counters where the payment could be done. This was truly a bigger scale as compared to Alphix, so, the income had to be higher. When it was his turn, Jack immediately paid for his products. None of the workers here knew that he was the boss, so, they never gave him any special treatment. But overall, Jack could see that the service quality here was good enough. He paid via his card as he had no cash on him. It cost him $2,700. He had bought a good number of things here. They were packed in a bag. He was just about to leave the store when his phone rang. He found that it was a new number that he hadn't saved. So, he didn't know who the caller was. He received. Immediately after, a male voice came through. Good evening Mr. Alfonso, I am the manager of Comest Grocers, Daniel Oraj. I've just gotten the information that you've purchased our store. The voice was filled with respect and uncertainty. Oh, you can just call me Jack and not Alfonso, Jack corrected. Since he was supposed to stop using the family influence, then he wouldn't accept a person calling him with the name Alfonso. Daniel was at first surprised by the young voice followed by the words. Well, not that it mattered. He was at first uncertain whether Jack was a member of Alfonso family from Crystal City. But now that he was being corrected, maybe he wasn't. Okay Mr. Jack. I would like to ask if there are any instructions or changes that you would like to be made, Daniel asked. I'm currently at the grocery on Falcon Street. Jack replied. Comest Grocers had two branches and one main store. So, Jack was in one of the branches. I do happen to be there too. I'll be down in a minute, Daniel replied before Jack hung up the call. In about two minutes, a middle-aged man on a suit rushed down from the upper floor. He then rushed towards the exit of the store ignoring the confused gazes of the customers and the workers. When he arrived, he called Jack. He heard a phone ringing closer. He then looked in that direction and saw that Jack was busy packing the things that he'd just bought from the grocery. Daniel immediately rushed over after hanging up. He then stretched his hand forward to greet Jack once again, 
Hello Mr. Jack. I am Daniel Araj. Jack shook his hand as he nodded. Then, he went straight to the point. There's no need to worry about the changes. I've been in there and I can see that things are good enough. So, in case there are any changes in the staff members, that will have to wait. Daniel nodded in both appreciation and agreement. Changing the staff at such a time would definitely cause problems, of course, this is about major changes and not one or two people in lower positions. As for the income, you can transfer it into the account that has been given to you, I presume? Jack asked. Yes, I've received the account. Daniel nodded. Although Jack looked younger, he didn't behave like those second generation kids who only knew how to spend money and not to earn. Okay then, I'll be seeing the staff tomorrow. You can tell me at what time there are not that many customers so that I can come. Jack instructed. I got it. At most, it's always around 10 in the morning. At that time, the number of customers is always the least. Daniel replied. Then I'll leave everything to you. Jack said before getting into the Bentayga as he headed towards the newly bought Prince and Princess Palace. Daniel watched as Jack left before turning around and heading back to the store. He then called to the person that was in charge of this branch. The new boss will be here to see the working staff tomorrow. I hope that you'll be prepared by 10 in the morning. The person in charge, Wycliffe replied. Okay, you can leave now. After Wycliffe left. Daniel immediately called the other branches in charge and told him the same thing before leaving to head to the main store. Not long after driving, Jack got to the mansion. The guards respectfully opened the gate for him. He found that the Bentley Continental GT had and the Suzuki had already been delivered by the Bentley store. He had previously left them there after taking the Bentayga. After parking the car at the parking lot, he immediately carried the things that he'd just bought from the grocery to the mansion. This time, he decided to stay inside the prince's palace. He liked the domineering and majestic vibe the most. After keeping those that needed to be kept fresh in the fridge, the rest like rice, sugar and so on were stored in the kitchen cabinet. The kitchen of this mansion was designed for a large group of people, seven in the least. After all, the kitchen was too big, just like how the cabinets were. After all the things that were bought by Jack were placed inside, they didn't even occupy 5% of the cabinet shelves. He immediately headed to the bedroom on the second floor via the elevator. That was where the master bedroom was located. The designing was so good. The bed was so huge in that it could fit more than five people. The material that was used in making the mattress was the best Jack had experienced as it was so soft and comfortable. After taking shower and changing into a bathrobe, he put the clothes that he'd just worn into the cleaning machine. He left all of his clothes back at the rented apartment room. He then dried them using a blow dryer. Then after putting the clothes back on, he immediately fell asleep on the big and comfortable bed. He didn't wake up till it was 8.30. He got down so that he could prepare food. After all, he was hungry as he hadn't taken dinner after such a busy day. This time, he decided to make himself a decent meal. He took the meat that he'd just bought and cut it into smaller pieces. He was going to make beef fried rice. This was something that he'd learned from the internet while he was still at the Alfonso family mansion. The ingredients were, cooking oil, shallots, minced garlic, sliced scallions, raisins. Cooked rice took him a few minutes to cook, soy sauce, fish sauce, ketchup, juice of one lime. Then, the cooking procedure followed. Heating the cooking oil in a wok or frying pan, he sauté the shallots, garlic and scallions until aromatic. He then added the raisins and tossed around until heated through. Turning up the heat, he dumped in the rice and stirred to break up lumps. He seasoned the rice with soy sauce, fish sauce and ketchup before stir-frying until the rice was heated through. Finally, he drizzled in lime juice before stirring. He then tasted it as he adjusted the seasonings. Seeing that it was okay, he immediately served after it had cooled down a little bit. He made sure that the warmth of the food was just good enough for him to eat without worrying about burning his tongue. After this satisfactory meal, he went upstairs where the bedrooms were. Going back a little bit, I'll give the setting of the mansion. The one that occupied the largest space on the ground floor was the main hall which would be the living room. There was a large LG 65-inch OLED Smart TV CS series. That was where, just in case there was a gathering, people could watch the news. The custom leather sofas occupied the most of the living room. There were twin throne chairs. These were obviously for the prince and the wife. 
The sofas and the throne chairs surrounded the a big rectangular glass table. The table was just like the bridge at the artificial lake. It was well designed to portray the majesty of a ruler. On the right side, divided by a wall and allowing entry via double doors, there was a hall where a long rectangular mahogany table was surrounded by chairs. These chairs were comfortable to sit on during a long meeting. On the left was where the kitchen and the dining room was. The kitchen was well designed and so were the table and the chairs in the dining room. Then, there was the entertainment room that was located at the basement. It was separated by soundproof glass. Although it was divided into rooms, one could see that they were big enough to fit more than 10 people at the same time without squeezing. There were several types of entertainment, a place one could sing, karaoke. Then the place for pool and other indoor games that didn't take much space. There was a gym where one could work out. The first floor was full of big bedrooms. There were eight big rooms occupying the entire floor. The second floor had a single bedroom. Then, there was an open space that faced the lake. There was a swimming pool that was located here as well as a balcony that had several potted flowers that made the scenery here change from the domineering one to that of warmth and gentleness. Jack got back to the master bedroom, the only room on the top floor of the mansion and lied on his back on the big bed. Then, he tried thinking of what he would be doing the following day. First thing first, he would be looking for the designer for the logo. After that, he would continue with the purchase of the store so that he could expand the business further. Then, there was the issue of the headquarters of Jackson Enterprise. This needed him to get a business building. There, he would transfer all the management of the grocery department. This would be the centralization of management but decentralization of the business. Now that he was only in inchoate city, management wouldn't be a problem at all. The only thing that would be a problem would be the renovation of these stores. What he wanted the most from buying these grocery stores directly instead of opening another one was to use the already existing reputation of the store. Just as he was thinking, his phone rang. Upon receiving it, he found that it was George. He was asking where the Freightliner was supposed to be parked. Jack simply told him to bring it at PPP. That's how the Prince and Princess Palace was known in the city. After hanging up, Jack looked at the time. It was already nine. Then, the system, as if seeing through his impatience, began working. Ding! You've earned $113,650. Multiplier applied. You've received $11,365,000. Flyer's bank account received $11,309,800. Current balance is $13,237,186. Ding! You've earned $113,650. Multiplier applied. You've received $11,365,000. Flyer's bank account received $11,309,800. Ding! First income. As a reward, you gain a custom-made Bugatti Veyron. Jack was immediately surprised by the first income reward. After all, this wasn't the first time that he was starting a grocery and wasn't expecting that he would receive a reward. But even so, if he was getting rewarded, why was there only one reward instead of seven? Ding! The system can improve the quality of the reward. In the first time grocery store income reward, it was decided that you'll be rewarded with a means of transport. Now that you've received seven at the same time, it is decided that the quality of the reward would be improved instead of the quantity. After hearing this, Jack nodded somehow absent-mindedly. If it was true, then why was he being given a motorcycle and a Bugatti Veyron? After all, these cannot be used by the grocery store at all. Ding! That's not true at all. The income that you're receiving from the smaller than small groceries are nothing worth to mention. As a result, you're rewarded personally so that you can improve your influence and then gain a bigger grocery that would in turn reward you with something that can help you in the grocery. Jack shook his head helplessly. Then, he thought of something. Where's the Veyron parked? Jack was worried that the car would have been parked inside the compound. If so, then the guards would surely wonder how it got inside and they hadn't allowed such a vehicle inside. Ding, no need to worry. The car is going to be delivered by the company. So, there's no need to worry about people wondering how a car suddenly appeared. Jack couldn't help but chuckle a little. After all, just the previous day, the system had just made the motorcycle appear at the entrance of the store and the keys in the counter's draw. Now, it was claiming that nobody would notice this? As if noticing what Jack was thinking, 
Another prompt arrived accompanied by the system's mechanical voice. Ding! The system's power is beyond what you can imagine. I just made everyone present at the store blind and made the bike appear there. After all, those people were not going to stay there and were going to leave. So, there was no need for people to wonder how the motorcycle appeared there when they were at another place. Then why not do the same thing with the Bugatti Veyron? Jack asked curiously. Ding! The reason is obvious. Since you purchased seven stores today, then it was obvious that there were going to be seven rewards. Once merged, you were going to receive the Bugatti. So, the procedures were completed early and so was the delivery. By the time that the delivery service arrives, you would have received the first income reward prompt. Ain't the system too powerful? Jack nodded, yes, the system is too powerful. He was somehow speechless about the system. Anyway, he decided not to pursue the issue. He was just about to check something when he received a call. This was the captain that was in charge of the mansion's security, Eric. After receiving the call, Jack found out that there was a freightliner that was claiming to be his and was supposed to be parked into the palace's parking lot. Jack immediately accepted and told him to allow the freightliner to enter. Furthermore, he instructed that there was a car that was going to be delivered not long from now, so, they had to allow it to enter. After hanging up the call, Jack immediately got out of the bedroom and headed towards the parking lot. There, he found that George was just jumping down from the truck. Boss, George greeted him as soon as he noticed Jack's presence. No need to be nervous. So tell me, how is the work? Jack waved his hand when he saw that George was nervous in his presence before asking about the store's business. George was nervous from the moment that Jack began buying cars. Then, the supply that he had just delivered on this day was worth $500,000. Then, when he was told to deliver the truck at the palace, he was immediately stunned. Who would have thought that Jack would have purchased the most expensive mansion in the entire city? The business was good. The grocery products were good too but, the amount was too large so, the store was so small and the equipment there couldn't support all of them. Thus, Agnes decided to rent a warehouse where we stored all the products that needed certain conditions for them not to go bad. George responded to Jack's question. Ha, huh, look at me now, I forgot something important as a warehouse. But, don't worry, you can deliver all the excess stock to commest grocers. This way, there would be nothing to worry about losses. As for a warehouse, I guess I have to get one. Jack slapped his forehead as he said this. He had forgotten that the grocery store was just a small one. As a result, there were things that couldn't fit in or there were no suitable equipment that could be used to ensure that they don't go bad. Got it boss, George replied happily. It seems that his boss had acquired another grocery. Although commist grocers weren't that much popular to those big shots of the city, they were well known to those from lower streets. He knew that Alphic's grocery store was nothing on front of Comest. But who would have thought that the two of them would be under the same boss? Jack was just about to talk about the development of the store in Yellow Street when he saw a large security truck heading towards the parking lot. It arrived in front of them in a short period of time. Then, a three bulky men wearing security uniform alighted from the truck. Then, a familiar person also alighted from the truck. When he saw Jack, he immediately hurried to where he was and said, Nice to meet you again Mr. Jack. I'm sorry that we're late in our delivery, so I hope that you don't mind. This was Evans Morris, the manager of the Bentley 4 feet S shop in Inchoate City. They had just met during the day when Jack was buying cars and one of the orders that he'd made was yet to be completed. Evans was at first excited and surprised when Jack decided to buy 25 cars at the same time. Furthermore, 24 out of them had to be repainted and so on. Then, when he was told to deliver a Bugatti Veyron to Jack, he couldn't help it. He kept on wondering, what the heck was Jack thinking? After all, he was buying so many cars, was he going to start something with them or what? Normally, the cars are delivered during the day. But, the order to deliver the car on this day was given from the Bentley's headquarters in the country. So, he decided to deliver the car even if it was nighttime. The car that Jack had just purchased was a customized version and thus was the only one in the world. When he saw the receipts, even he was frightened. That was the reason as to why he brought over security with guns. The Bugatti Veyron was worth $73 million. This was a big amount to spend on the car. But, the features of the car were top-notch too. After all, 
The maximum speed of the Bugatti Veyron was 600 miles per hour. It was bulletproof. Then, there was a fact that it was luxurious. The number plate had Jack's name. As for comfort, although it was a sports car, they had made sure that whoever drives it was comfortable. I don't mind at all. Jack replied while at the same time, he thought, system, you see, even the one delivering the car know that they're late. Ding, business doesn't know about what time is. It only cares about the period that the business must be carried out. After all, if you're given seven hours to complete a task, then you won't care if it's day or night, you'll have to complete it within the given time. Jack. Can we unload it? Evans asked. Just go ahead. I want to see how it looks. Jack nodded. George who was behind Jack was also curious about the vehicle that was delivered at night. After all, what he knew was that the delivery was always done during the day. If one ordered a car online at night, even if the store that he had ordered the car from was closer, the delivery would only happen the following day. The only solution to getting a car at night would be to go to the store that operates throughout. The truck doors were opened and soon, an exquisite car that was a definition of recherche. The car was painted a mix of blue, red and yellow. The colors were mixed in such a way that it was not a mess but a show of beauty. Jack nodded in satisfaction after seeing the outer appearance of the Bugatti. He could see that the number plate of the car was inch. A 888. Then right above the plate number, there was a name written in capital letters. Jack, this word was a work of art too. Then, he immediately got into the car. The interior of the Bugatti Veyron was really something. It showed both luxury and comfort. Evans began introducing the car to Jack. Jack was also surprised by the properties of the car. He hadn't expected that the system knew his character so well. After the introduction, Evans then asked Alex to test the car out. But, there was only one problem. Jack wasn't that good when it came to driving sports cars. Although he could drive them, he wasn't at the level that he could handle the Bugatti well. This was unlike the Bentley Continental GT. After all, the Bugatti had many buttons like that of a plane. So, Jack wasn't sure about what to do. Ding! The system can assist you. You'll be rewarded with the professional driving skills. But, you'll have to complete a task given to you at the specified period of time. If the task isn't completed, then not only would you lose the skill, you'll also be punished by the system. Ding! The system can assist you. You'll be rewarded with the professional driving skills, but, you'll have to complete a task given to you at the specified period of time. If the task isn't completed, then not only would you lose the skill, you'll also be punished by the system. Jack wasn't expecting that there would be something like this. After all, when the introduction of the system was being made, he wasn't told that there was anything called missions but, it seems that it exists. What is this mission thingy? Jack asked. Ding, this is an emergency mission program. In the situation where the host has no way out, the system can provide what is needed. But, it's like you're purchasing it and you'll pay later at a given period of time. The payment method would be for you to complete the task that the system will assign you. And, the task must be completed within the given period of time, otherwise, you'll be punished after the reward is taken away from you. Jack was left stunned for a while, then he thought to himself, it seems that the system won't let me be embarrassed. After a moment of thought, he asked expectantly, what is the mission? Ding! The mission that you'll have to complete so that you can permanently have the skill is as follows. Task. Earn money by participating in winning a race. Time limit, 3 days. Jack thought for a moment and felt that the mission wasn't that difficult. There were several rich second generation kids racing at the mountains. All he needed to do was to get there and sign up for the competition. The time limit that he had been given by the system was three days. He can complete all the things that need his urgent attention within two days. Then, on the third day, he would be able to complete the mission given to him by the system. Anyway, he was wondering why the system would give him a mission like, win a race to earn money, seriously? But, he decided not to pursue the issue as he could see that the people outside were giving him strange gazes. After all, he had gotten into the car for about three minutes but there was no activity yet. They were thinking to themselves. Why isn't he driving already? Or he doesn't know how to drive it? If so, then why did he buy it? Of course, they wouldn't dare to say this out loud. The first reason was that, they didn't know Jack's character, if he would be offended by that statement and retaliate or not. The second reason was because none of them knew of Jack's background. 
If the background was too big, then it was better to try to get on his good side than trying to anger him. At this time, Jack stretched his head out of the window and called George. I know you like cars so much. Come in here and experience it. Maybe in the future, if you work well, I'll reward you with a sports car. George who was still speculating the reason as to why Jack wasn't driving yet immediately became flustered after hearing Jack's words. One had to know that this Bugatti Veyron was worth $73 million. He himself had never been in a sports car worth several hundred thousand, let alone one that cost several tens of millions. Of course, he was happy that his boss wanted him to try the car with him, after all, this was the first time that the boss was going to drive it. Then, what made him even happy was the promise that the boss had just made. He would receive a sports car of his own as long as he performed his duties well. But of course, he knew that the most important thing was loyalty. If he proved his loyalty, his boss would surely treat him better. Thinking of this, he immediately rushed to the car while ignoring Evans's envious gazes. After all, although Evans was selling the cars, that didn't mean that he could afford them even with his high salary. There were cars that were absolutely out of his league, and the Bugatti Veyron was one of them. After reaching the car, George immediately got in after Jack opened the door for him. After George got in, Jack immediately made a decision to accept the system mission. I'll take it. Ding. Advance reward claimed. Professional driving skills acquired. Merging the skill with the host. 0.10%.50%.80%.100%. Merging completed. Task assigned. The host will have to complete it within three days or he would receive system punishment. As soon as he said that he accepted the task in exchange for the reward, he felt warmth washing over his body, more so his head. It took a single second for all of this to happen. As Jack regained his focus, George was done putting on the seatbelt. Jack on the other hand, he felt that he was very familiar with the sports car. It was as if he had been handling the car since he was born. He immediately started the car, put on the safety belt before stepping on the accelerator. Vroom. Vroom. The roars of the Bugatti echoed in the silent night. Then, within one swift motion, the Bugatti immediately galloped towards the gate. The acceleration of the Bugatti was about 100 kilometers in 2.5 seconds. So, in no time, they had arrived at the gate. The guards had already gotten ready to open the gate as soon as they saw Jack getting in the car. So, they immediately pushed the gate open, letting Jack get out of the palace unhindered. As soon as he got on the road that led out of the residential area, the speed of the Bugatti Veyron immediately shot up. Considering the fact that the community here was where the rich stayed, the number of cars that could be found on the road were small. For this reason, Jack had no reservations at all, he wanted to test the speed of this Bugatti. After all, what was this issue of it having a maximum speed of about 350 miles per hour only for it to be driven at a speed of 60 miles per hour or less? George who was sitting on the passenger seat was immediately frightened by the way that Jack was driving. After all, the speed was just fast and that the vehicles that they were meeting or overtaking only noticed that a car had passed by a second after they had already gone past. This was the first time that George had seen a car move like this on such a road. After all, although they were racing back then, but the road that they were using was a mountainous one, that would have been cleared before the competition. At the corners, as long as he could see what was coming from the other side, Jack never reduced the speed and did the drift. He wasn't worried about the car flipping over. After all, with the professional driving skills, there was no way that he could get into an accident due to his driving. With drifts, Jack went around the residential area for two laps before heading back to the palace. To go around the residential area for two laps, not only took Jack about half an hour. The guards immediately opened the gate after hearing the roaring of the Bugatti's engine. Although the car was moving at a high speed, Jack was able to stop the car right on Tyke in the parking lot, just beside the Bentayga. George had previously parked the Freightliner on the further end of the parking lot. On the other hand, Jack was parking closet to the center. At this moment, the walls of the parking lot were down. After getting out of the car, George immediately let out a sigh of relief. After all, the Bugatti's speed and Jack's insane driving had frightened him to the extent that he wanted to immediately jump out of the car. But, he knew that if he jumped out of the car, he would immediately die or have most of the bones in his body broken due to rough landing in the tarmac. 
The only comfort that he had was that, he was putting on a seat belt and the car was bulletproof. That implied that not even a bullet could pierce through it. So, normal collision or flipping accidents wouldn't be able to destroy the car. Jack got out of the car and looked at Evans before saying, the car is good. Then, he took the receipts and the documents that showed that he'd received the car before signing them. With Jack's skill as a professional driver, he could immediately find out if there was a problem with the car. So, although he wouldn't be able to deal with most of the problems if there were, he could at least deal with the most simple ones. After sending Evans and his team off, Jack looked at George and asked, Where do you live? I'll take you there. George was immediately flustered and scared. After all, with Jack's maniac driving, although he was a cars enthusiast, he couldn't enjoy the thrill of the sports car if Jack was going to be the driver, so, he immediately thought of refusing. After all, it was still 9, close to 10, so, he could still get a taxi to get him home. After thinking it through in a short moment, he replied, Thank you boss but I wouldn't want to disturb you. I will just take a cab home. You know that it's rate to find a cab in this part of the city. After all, almost all of those living in this area have their own cars. As Jack said this, he headed towards the Bentley Continental GT. He hadn't tested the car yet. George couldn't argue back as what Jack had said was the truth. He would have to walk to the area where the taxis passed or wait here for a chance that there was a person coming to this residential area in a cab. For some reason, when he saw that Jack wasn't going to drive the Bugatti Veyron, he was relieved. After all, the speed of the Bugatti Veyron was far higher than that of the Bentley Continental GT. So, he immediately followed Jack and entered the Bentley Continental GT. It took Jack more than 30 minutes to arrive at George's residence. The area wasn't where the rich could be found. This was Yellow Street after all. After dropping him off, Jack went back to the rented apartment. Parking the Bentley Continental GT in the small parking lot, he immediately headed to his rented room. He decided to take a few clothes with him. After all, he had to change. Although he had an idea of buying new clothes, he didn't think that it was urgent. Since he wasn't going to abandon this apartment as he may need to stay in the yellow street sometimes if he was tired, he decided to leave a few sets of clothes. After that, he immediately headed back to the palace. He wanted to enjoy the king-size bed. After all, this would be his first night spending a night in a comfortable bed in a place that he could call home. He slept and only woke up when it was about 7.30 in the morning. He went towards the windows. They were floor-to-ceiling glass windows facing the east. As he pushed aside the curtains that had dragons and some other ferocious beasts drawings aside, Jack could clearly feel the warmth of the rising sun landing on his skin. He somehow felt refreshed and energetic. He then observed the sun as it moved higher. Without noticing, he had been standing there for more than 30 minutes. When he got back to his senses, he immediately went to take a shower before preparing himself a simple and sumptuous breakfast. Looking at the time, it was already approaching 9. So, he immediately got out of the mansion and headed to the parking lot. Taking the Bentley Continental GT, he drove out of the palace grounds as he headed towards the city center. He was going to look for the designer for his logo. As long as it was completed faster, then the cars as well as the uniforms that he'd ordered would be completed earlier. He arrived at a 10-story building. This was where the designer company that Sabrina had talked about was located. He headed inside and took the elevator to the seventh floor where the designer office was located. These designers were known as Canvas Graphics Arts. They were popular within the country and were also known as an international brand. Here in Inchoate, this was just a small branch. Jack had decided upon this designer company because he wanted his enterprise's logo to be something that he could be proud of. He didn't want it to be amateurish as it would surely embarrass him in the future when his enterprise's reputation is at the top. He arrived at the lobby. Although it was just 9 in the morning, he could see that the designers were busy. After waiting for about 15 minutes, he was invited into an office. Although it was simple, the elegance of the room was top-notch. After a simple exchange of greetings with the lady in charge of the office, Jack immediately went straight to the point. I'm going to start an enterprise. The enterprise isn't something that is going to be small, but one that can reach the international level. So, I would like your company to design a logo for me, one that I can use even if the enterprise has reached the international level. MMH, that can happen. Since you're saying that it would soon be an international brand, 
then that means that we'll have to request the top designers of the company at the capital city. The lady, whose name was Maggie replied. She was already in her late thirties and was currently wearing an official business suit. She had an authoritative aura around her. This shows that she had been in a high position for a good period of time. I've got no problems about the price of designing the logo. The only thing that I would like would be that the process be sped up. After all, I've got somewhere that they're waiting for the logo so that the orders that I've placed can be completed, Jack said. Oh, for the time, it would at most take a week as long as you take the VIP level service. The VIP level service is sold at $5 million. With this, the logo will be designed by one of the top designers in the headquarters, Maggie replied. I don't want one of the best, what I want is the best. I don't know if I can get the best designer of your company to do this work for me, Jack asked. That might be a little problematic. After all, as the top designer, he's mostly busy and for a person to see him, they would need to make an appointment first. Maggie frowned a while before shaking her head. Look, it doesn't matter how much it costs, I would really like to get the logo done as soon as possible. If there's a way for that to happen, I'm willing to pay the price, Jack insisted. Maggie thought for a moment before looking at Jack and said, let me make a call and do an enquiry first. Jack nodded in response. Maggie took the phone on the desk before calling. After talking for more than three minutes, she finally hung up as she looked at Jack. I guess that you're lucky. There was a person that had made an appointment with him tomorrow but he's just withdrawn. So, if you want, you can acquire this spot at a cost of $10 million, Maggie said. Jack let out a sigh of relief after hearing what she had said. It seems that his luck was quite good. There's no problem at all. I'll pay $5 million first before paying the rest tomorrow morning, is that okay? Jack asked. He still had to spend money on other things today and as a result, he wasn't quite willing to spend all the money that he was having. He still had to purchase a few more grocery stores today and all of this required him to spend money. There's no problem at all. Maggie was at first surprised that Jack didn't even bargaining, and what's more, he was going to make pay 50% of the cost on the spot and the rest would be paid the following day. But after thinking for a moment, she felt that it wasn't strange. After all, he had said that the enterprise that he was going to start was going to reach the international level. What's more, he had come to one of the top designer companies in the country. It was obvious that he was serious about what he was saying. But what made her curious was, what kind of enterprise he was going to start, she could have asked but her behavior didn't allow her to do so, do, she simply accepted Jack's payment and the details of the enterprise. The details were like, the name, what the enterprise would be engaging in and so on. When Maggie heard that the enterprise that Jack was going to start had no majors and minors, she was surprised once again. What Jack meant was that, he would be in all the industries, the clothing, medicine, food, transport and others. She then thought to herself, would this brand really reach the international level if it goes to all the areas at once? Maggie's thoughts weren't unfounded. After all, if a person wants to take a piece of every industry, then the capital that was needed was not only high, but the enterprise would surely have many enemies that would try to suppress it. Business was all about competition. There was no way a business would sit at the side while watching a rival rising to power. They would definitely try to look for ways to stop the rise. Of course, these thoughts were only there because she didn't know that Jack had the 100 times income multiplier system. No matter what, Jack could never suffer a loss. And why was that? He was sure that there was no way that the losses that the business would have incurred would reach 100 times the income that he'd earned. For example, if he was doing a business, during the process, he earned a million, he was sure that there was no way that the business would lose 100 million, right? With the system, the million would be multiplied to a hundred million which would be enough to cover for the losses that he would have suffered. After making sure that there was nothing wrong with the information that he'd submitted, Jack immediately drove to the calmest grocer's branch that he'd been to the previous day. He was going to meet the staff on this day. He'd already left the guards the message that George was allowed to enter the palace to get the freightliner. So, he was sure that all the goods that were stored in the warehouse would be taken to the grocery stores. As soon as he arrived, he found that all the staff were ready to receive him. Daniel was present too as he was the manager in charge of the stores. Welcome boss, as soon as they saw Jack getting out of the Bentley Continental GT, the working staff immediately shouted in unison. 
The faces of some of the younger female working staff were already getting red from agitation and admiration. Not only was Jack handsome, he was also rich. Just the car that he was driving had already attracted them. There were some of them that were already planning on how to get closer to him. They knew that the chances were low but they were ready to try. Good morning everyone, as soon as Jack got in front of them, he immediately greeted them. His expression wasn't that cold but his temperament was outspoken. Every of his steps and moves showed his dominating presence. This was a trait of all those that had been raised in a big family like Alfonso family. Jack hadn't engaged in the family business, but how he handled himself since young was still imprinted in his bones. After the greetings were out of the way, Daniel glanced at the slightly over 10 people and began the introduction. After the brief introduction, Jack got to know the names of his employees in this branch. Then, he thought for a moment and said, you guys don't need to be stiff in my presence at all. All you need to do is work hard for the grocery store. As long as you guys work hard, there would be subsequent rewards for you. All of them immediately cheated after they heard that there would be rewards as long as they worked hard. As for the changes, for the time being, there will be no changes in the way that the business was operating. If there are any changes that I'd like to make, that'll take a little while longer. Jack said after the staffs calmed down. After that was done, he went with Daniel to the only office available. In case Daniel was at the headquarters of the grocery store, the one that would be using the office would be the person that was in charge of this branch, Wycliffe. Now that Jack was here, it was obvious that he would sit on the boss's chair. As soon as Daniel sat down, Jack spoke. I've got several grocery stores in the city and I'm going to start a brand, so, I hope that you'll cooperate with others, I'll introduce them. As for now, there's one that's called George, he'll be delivering some products here later today. As Jack said this, he immediately gave Daniel George's contact information. By the way, the supply of the stock and the methods of delivery, is there a problem? Jack asked. Currently, the contract that we had signed for the supplies is about to expire, so, there's a need for the renewal. Then, for the issue of deliveries, we always hire a vehicle with a freezer to do that. Daniel replied. Okay, the issue of the contract, there's no need to worry about it. I've already signed a supply contract, so the stock wouldn't go down. Delivery, you can ask George. He's in charge of delivery, and, if there's a problem of lack of enough vehicles, then you can just contact me and I'll get them. Jack nodded and replied. Daniel was surprised that there was an exclusive car that could he used to transport the grocery products. This would not only reduce the costs, it would also reduce the risks such as the driver running away with the goods or being careless and causing great losses. After he was done, Jack immediately got out of there together with Daniel as he visited the other branch and the main store. After that, he went and visited the other four stores that he'd just purchased. He left them with instructions before heading towards Yellow Street. He was thinking of buying a bigger shop so that he could transfer the current Alphix grocery store. This way, there would be no problems about the storage issues. After arriving at the store, he found both Agnes and Charles. Charles had thoroughly cleaned the store and it looked better. There were a few customers coming in and out of the store as Jack parked the Bentley Continental GT. Of course, this was a car that was worth millions. As a result, there was a sensation as soon as Jack parked the Bentley outside the store. Although this wasn't the first time that such an expensive vehicle was coming to Yellow Street, it was rare to see one, not to mention one that was worth millions. Wow, what a handsome guy. I wish I can get a boyfriend like him. Hey, stop dreaming. Do you think that you're worth a person like him? He does look handsome and is rich. Is he some kind of second generation in the city or from outside? Hey, are you an idiot? Can't you see that the registration number is for Encoet? Now that you mention it, do you know what that car is? Yes, I saw it on the internet. This is a Bentley Continental GT. It's worth $7,399,999. That expensive? Do you think it is a joke? Anyway, what family do you think he's from? Never heard of him before. Anyway, what is he doing here in Yellow Street? And a grocery store at that. There are several big grocery stores at the center of the city. What do you know? Maybe he just wants to try how the products in this part of the city taste like. I thought that the things in the grocery are the same. It's just that the quality is low in the grocery at this part of the city. That's what I meant. Who are you fooling? How can a rich person decide to leave better food so that he can come and eat lower quality ones? 
Have you never seen a rich person eating in a stall by the road? Jack cared none of this as he greeted both Agnes and Charles. According to them, George had left about an hour ago. So, he should be closer to coming back. Jack nodded and then thought of something. Where you guys stay, is there a good parking space? He asked both Charles and Agnes. Both of them were stunned for a moment. What's the use of a parking lot if they had nothing to park there? As if noticing their questions, he said, the Bentley Bentayga Odyssey and addition that I bought are for my employees. As long as it is work-related, the cars can be used. So, I was wondering whether there's a parking lot in your area do that you can use the car in traveling. The two were immediately elated after hearing this. The boss treats his employees so well, they thought to themselves before bringing their minds back to the facts. Boss, where I live isn't suitable for the car of that price to be parked there. Not only is the space limited, but there are some people who can damage the car there. Dejected, Charles replied. The same here. Although the parking space is there, it's always full. The only place that we can use would be the government parking, Agnes replied. Jack had already been to George's place the previous night. He could see that there was no place for the car to be parked. That's the reason why he asked the two if they had a place that they could park the car. After thinking for a moment, he decided, Can you guys relocate? I can get you an apartment with better conditions so that you can use it as staff's dormitory. Why yes boss. But, won't that be too much? After all, the expenses and the income that we bring in don't match at all. In fact the expenses are higher than the income. Agnes said after some hesitation. Don't worry about it. The business may be low now but in the near future, maybe next month, you'll have to work harder. So, I am preparing you for a lot of work, Jack said. Upon hearing Jack's words, they remembered that he'd told them that he might put them in charge of groceries in two or three streets. That implied that he was going to expand the business. Furthermore, his action of buying many cars and at the same time having the employees getting the uniforms proved that he was rich and he wasn't going to run such a small store. After Jack left the store, he immediately headed towards Leviation Agencies. He wanted to look for a good shop that could be used in Yellow Street. He wanted to get ready for the enterprise. They were a private one and they could help him get an empty shop in the street. It didn't take long for him to get there. He headed to the familiar office. There, he found the familiar receptionist. Upon seeing Jack, the lady raised her brows in surprise but calmed down a little while later. Great to see you again. How may I help you? She asked as soon as Jack arrived in front of her and took his seat. I want to get another shop. A bigger one, more than five times bigger and it should be located at a place with a parking space. It should also be located at a good place for business, Jack stated. I guess you'll have to talk with the manager. I can't deal with that operation. As the lady spoke, she immediately got from behind the counter and led Jack towards another office. There, he found that there was a middle-aged woman. She was busy with something on her computer as she didn't even raise her head when she asked the receptionist and Jack to enter. After about a minute, she raised her head and looked at Jack and the lady. Seeing that she was paying attention, the lady spoke. Mr. Jack here wants to buy a shop in Yellow Street. The lady then went on to describe what Jack needed. After listening for a while, the woman looked at Jack in surprise as she spoke. Oh, we do have that shop. It has been a little while since the last time that a person asked about it. After all, the price of the shop is higher but the location of the shop is Yellow Street, which is a small place. Jack nodded. This was the truth. After all, who would dare to spend a lot of money to purchase a shop and the spendings of the customers in the area wouldn't be able to bring back the money spent. Of course, only Jack would do that. So, after going through the price and the image of the shop, Jack immediately agreed and paid the price for the shop. It cost him a total of $832,579. He took the certificates and headed to the shop. Then, he immediately headed to the shop's location. The shop's position was good. The size was good as well. It was just a little bigger than commist grocers. Jack nodded in satisfaction. He decided that he was going to make this the main grocery store in the entire street. As for Alfix, since it was small, he would immediately shift to this new shop as soon as the logo and renovation was done. He then left the shop, heading towards the parking area that was a few hundred meters away. He was getting closer to the car when he heard a sarcastic voice coming from the side. Isn't this Jack? It seems that you like sports cars but you can't afford them? It was a male voice. 
Turning around, Jack was stunned upon seeing that the person who had just spoken was none other than Steve. And beside him, Brenda stood, looking at him with a sly smile. Jack had never expected that these two half-siblings would be able to find him even after he had left their mansion. Furthermore, he had made sure not to tell anyone where he was going to. But now, seeing that the two of them were here at the same time, then this was by no means a coincidence, they must have known where he was. Thinking things through, Jack immediately thought of the taxi that he'd used to get here. He remembered that it was Brenda that had called for it, and not he himself. That implied one thing. The driver had agreed to disclose his information. Although Jack was irritated, he still didn't blame that guy. After all, if he dared to go against Brenda, it was a sure bet that his life wouldn't end well. Jack simply took a deep breath and looked at the duo before asking, what are you guys doing here? Hee hee, Brenda chuckled as if Jack's question was funny. Then, she continued, of course, we're here to look out for our younger brother. I don't need it, I'm okay. You can just go back, no need to worry about me. Jack was direct with his words. From childhood till this moment, he knew that flattering these half-siblings of his wouldn't do him good. So, he had always been cold and direct with them, not hiding his thoughts at all. Bah, what's up with you Jack? We've come all the way from Crystal City to pay you a visit and this is all that we get, Brenda frowned as she asked, obviously pretending to be hurt. Jack bought none of her expression and said, I don't remember inviting you to find me. I might as well pay for your transportation costs back to Crystal City. Hey chill it down boy. You know, there's no need to hide things from you. You're banished from the family. Now, we're here to make sure that you're not using the family name. After all, you using the name would surely demean our family's reputation. Steve spoke at this moment. Jack stared at him with a blank expression on his face. Then, he said in a low voice, You know that I've never used the family name even while I was back in Crystal City. Why would I want to use it now? Are you sure? Because I am sure that you've got no money on you. If you're using the family's name to get someone to host you, then you have to break it immediately. After all, if you dare to do that, then our family would surely sue you. Steve said after a moment of silence. Jack, you on need of cash? Him? You can tell your sister here. She will surely give you some so that you don't live in streets. Brenda spoke with her signature sly smile. I've already said that I don't need your concern. All right, if there's nothing else, I'll be on my way now. As Jack said these words, he completely ignored the two as he went to the Bedley Continental GT. Opening the door, he got in before driving off. The two siblings were left both wide-eyed and slack-jawed. They had never expected that Jack would be driving a car that was worth millions even after he had come from the family. From what they knew, Jack was a frugal person, wanting to save all that he could. Even back at the family mansion, he had never bought a car like his half-brothers or cousins. Although the clothes that he was wearing were pretty decent for a person from Alfonso family, it wasn't up to par. Now, he had left the family mansion and he'd bought a car worth millions, from what they knew, the total amount of money that would have saved wouldn't be enough to buy a Bentley Continental GT. Do you think this car is his? Steve asked. Although he was older, he knew that when it came to intelligence, he was far below Brenda. From the way it is, I can see that it's new. That means that the car has been recently bought. But, Jack doesn't have money to buy the car. So, it means that he has found someone to support him, he has borrowed the car or, he had somehow gotten money from the family during his stay there. Brenda spoke with her eyes narrowed. For the first one, as far as I can remember, Jack has never left Crystal City. That means that he's got no connections here. The second one, since he has no connections here, there's no way that a person can give him a newly bought car. As for the third, I haven't gotten any information on money missing. And even if there was money missing, Jack was never given a responsibility, so, it's impossible for him to get money. Brenda continued analyzing. As Steve heard all of this, he couldn't help but think to himself, what a frightening girl. The only thing that remains is that, he has used the family influence to get someone to help him, and, that person doesn't know that he's no longer a member of Alfonso family. Finally, Brenda came to a conclusion that she could accept. Steve remained silent all this while. He kept frowning while thinking, but there was nothing that he could think of that could match Brenda's thoughts. Brenda then glanced at the shop that Jack had just come from. She narrowed her eyes in suspicion. Then, her lips curled into a sly smile. 
She gazed towards the direction that Jack had left before saying, let's get going. We need to find where this brat is getting money from. With that, the duo left the site as they headed towards the center of the city. Currently, Jack had a balance of $7,404,607. He wanted to purchase a building that would be used as the headquarters of Jackson Enterprise. But, this amount wasn't enough to purchase a building that could host the reputation of an international-level enterprise. So, he decided to discard that thought aside. He would have to collect enough cash before going for the purchase. He would have to buy the biggest office building in the city. As he thought of this, he immediately drove to the government office in charge of shops. He wanted to continue buying grocery stores so that he could earn more income. On his way, he thought of something important. Having many grocery shops was fine, but they needed management. So, he would have to get himself a manager that could do that. He then made a decision, he would try and see if he could recruit a manager that was good in the grocery business. This way, he wouldn't need to worry about the issue of poor management of the stores. In about half an hour or more, he arrived at the office. He then marched through the familiar corridor that led to the office that he'd been to previously. When he reached the place that he'd collided with the lady the previous day, he stopped for a moment. For some strange reasons, his originally cold expression somehow melted as he revealed a rare smile. This smile perfectly matched his handsome face, making him show the charm that he was hiding. The blue eyes showed some kind of strange of emotion that they hadn't shown since he was 15 years old. After a moment of remembering what had happened the previous day, as well as the beautiful face that matched her extraordinary temperament, Jack finally headed to the office. Welcome Mr. Jack, the man, whom had attended to Jack the previous day immediately welcomed him. Jack nodded I response. After taking a seat, the man spoke, Mr. Jack, since you told me that you wanted the grocery stores, I made sure to make enough preparations for you. Unlike the previous day, his attitude this time was flattering. After all, as long as Jack bought more shops under him, then the amount of money that he would receive at the end of the deal would be big enough for him to go on a vacation. So, since the previous day that Jack had wanted to purchase the shops, he made sure to get more shops that could be sold. He went as far as persuading some owners to sell their stores. He offered good prices for the stores, which some of the owners felt that there was no harm in gaining some profit. But of course, there were some that wouldn't agree to sell their stores, no matter what. For this reason, the man decided that he would look for the most expensive stores that could be sold. In this way, although the number of stores that would be sold would be low, but the amount of money that would be brought in would be enough. Jack went through the folder that he had been given. He was slightly surprised upon seeing that in less than 24 hours, the man had already gotten more than 15 stores, ready to sell them. The thing that made Jack's eyes shine was the fact that all of these stores were big, the size of Comister bigger. Although they were good, Jack immediately knew that the price of these stores would surely be higher. What's the collective cost? Jack asked after closing the folder and returning to the man. The man immediately smiled. The total price of those 15 stores plus the stock and the employee's salary is $14,653,000. As he said the price, his smile grew wider. Jack thought for a moment. Although the price was high, he could see that the conditions of the stores were good. They were making profits, and good ones at that. Furthermore, they were located in different places of the city. That meant that Jack's influence was already around the city. If they were located in the same place, he would obviously buy one and ignore the other one. How could he make his two stores compete instead of using the money to buy another store dealing in another area? I'll give you $5 million now. Tomorrow at around 10 in the morning, I'll send the remaining balance. I don't know if that's okay with you. Jack made his decision. One thing that he wanted to make sure of was that, his card would never be empty. He wanted to have money, just in case there was an emergency. Of course Mr. Jack, I'll immediately do that. The man said while laughing happily. In just two days, he had sold shops worth over 10 million. And what's more, there was tomorrow. By the way, continue preparing the shops. As long as you make sure that the size is good and they're not competing with each other, then I'll buy them all. Jack stated. Ha ha ha, sure, sure Mr. Jack. The man replied as he completely lost the etiquette of a government official. It has been three days since Jack met with his two half-siblings. During these past two days, he had already completed the payment for the logo design, then, he handed it to the clothes and cars shop. 
This way, all of his orders would begin to be processed. At the same time, he didn't stop purchasing grocery stores. And since there were several of them and were at different parts of the city, Jack had no choice but to get a manager. Well, he got more than one manager, to be precise. It was just that, there was a single one that had authority over the other seven. Jack had decided that the groceries would be divided into zones depending on their location in the city. He had decided on the eight compass directions. North, East, West, South, Northeast, Northwest, Southeast and finally Southwest. Each direction matched the city in that, the northern zone was found in the northern part of the city. But of course, there was another zone that he hadn't selected a manager yet. He had promised Agnes, George and Charles that he may make them the leaders of the grocery stores in two or three streets. He was going to fulfill that. But that would have to wait to the time that they were going to move to the new shop that he'd bought in Yellow Street. Not only was it spacious, it had a good parking space too. They had yet to move in and it would need two more days before the renovation would be completed. He was doing the same with the other stores that he'd bought around the city. Of course, the renovation that he was doing on the other stores that had business running was just painting and adding the logo that had been designed by the best designer of Canvas Graphics Arts Designers. They had completed and sent him the logo via his email this morning. Immediately after that, he had sent this to the managers of each region to get someone, a professional in painting of course, to insert the logo during the time that the business was low. All the groceries under him were now painted, being painted or would be painted lime green. This was going to be the color of his grocery department. During these past days, the income coming from the grocery department had been increasing and so was the amount that he was spending. But all the same, he was making sure to clear all the debts. Currently, the only debt on him was the one for the Prince and Princess Palace. He still had a debt of over 10 million, that would be repaid soon as the projects that had been consuming money were at their final periods. As for the supply contract that he'd signed, the condition that was decided on was one of COD. With every delivery, Jack would have to make the payments within a day. This would go on until the $30 million order was completed. As for the staff uniforms, some had already been completed. A lime green top with a matching blazer, black bottoms. The logo of Jackson Enterprise was also printed on the left chest. And since this was the grocery department, there was a G. D added below the logo. Now, the only thing that he needed to do was ask a manager to go and collect them. The clothes were ready before, only needing the logo. Now that Jack had sent them the logo in the morning, they had printed them on a few of them. On the first night, he received $301,458. On the second night, he received $789,532. And on this night, Jack wasn't sure how much he was going to receive as he had made further purchases of the stores. Now, if these two were multiplied by a hundred times, it would bring a total of $109,089,000. With this amount of money, Jack had no problem in paying for the stores that he purchased the previous day and today. Then, there was the issue about the first income reward. Jack had been told by the system that he could save them and receive all of them at the same time in the form of a higher quality reward. As a result, since Jack didn't want so many sports cars or motorcycles, he agreed to this. Currently, there were a total of 47 stores that Jack owned. He was going to make the final purchase the following day and he would be closing the chapter about purchasing grocery stores in Incoed City. The total expenses till this moment was approximately $72 million. This included the payment for the uniform, buying eight more Freightliners, paying for renovation of the stores, buying an apartment for Agnes, Charles and George, buying a few pairs of clothes and paying for the stock purchase. He had also bought a total of eight Freightliners. All of them were still undergoing repainting at this time before they get delivered so that the stores in the eight zones can start using them. As for the one that he'd bought before, that would be used by the central zone, located at the center of the city. Of course, there were no stores that he'd purchased there just yet. He would do so after buying an office building for Jackson Enterprise. Currently, there was no store under his name that lacked stock. The only things that would need refreshing would be those that were needed fresh. But for those that had a long shelf life, there were enough for a month or two. Flyer's bank account balance is $29,840,607. Jack was currently standing on the bridge while looking at the setting sun the horizon was already painted orange as the sun had already sunk but its hue was still being displayed. 
As the orange color of the horizon reflected on his blue eyes, a complicated feeling was rising with his heart and flooding to his eyes. For some reason, every night, he would either think of her before sleeping or he would dream about her. This was the first time that a stranger had occupied his mind in such a manner. He didn't know what to do about the strange feelings. He was getting an urge to go out and meet her, to at least see her face again so that his heart that had began beating out of rhythm could calm down. He let out a slightly frustrated sigh. He was wondering what was going on with him. He knew well that the city was big and there was no way that he could find her unless he had connections. But still, the connections that he'd built do far were just smaller ones and couldn't do much. He took a look at his newly bought watch and saw that it was already 10 minutes past 5 in the evening. This was the last day of the time that the system had given him to complete the task. Since today was July 17th, the temperatures were already at 19 degrees Celsius, it was summer after all. He had previously asked George where there could be some rich young masters of inchoate city that liked racing. George had told him that most nighttime car racing occurred at a mountainous called Mount Bright. This mountain was mainly made of bare rocks and had little vegetation on it. But still, the roads that were made below the mountain or on some of the lower parts of the mountain were good. After looking at it in Google, Jack had seen that it was true. Furthermore, it seemed that the person who had planned the construction of the roads there had the intention of creating a place for racing. After all, the roads in the area around the mountain were rarely used and what's more, they were in such a way that a person might think that they were racetracks due to the bends. Furthermore, they were in such a way that one could go several laps as long as he, she doesn't take the road that led back to the city. The special feature of this mountain was that, it had a low altitude and didn't have snow. So, it didn't affect the temperatures around the city that much during winter but the effects could be seen during summer. The temperatures at night were high on the western part of the city, closer to the mountain. Maybe that's why they called it Mount Bright, Jack wasn't sure about it. Jack went back to the prince's palace mansion. After taking his early supper, he got prepared for the race. He wore a white t-shirt, a pair of black jeans and white sneakers. This outfit immediately outlined his well-sculpted body. With a matching handsome face, he really looked dashing. He got out of the mansion and headed for the parking lot. There, he found George waiting for him, since it was going to be Jack's first time there, he needed a person to introduce him. George had been going there before. That was when he was still racing, before he began delivery work. Good evening boss, as soon as George, who was adorned in a pair of casual blue jeans, a black t-shirt and a pair of polo shoes, saw Jack, he immediately greeted him enthusiastically. Since he was hired by Jack, the quality of his life had drastically improved and it wasn't a week yet. Jack had gotten them an apartment where they stayed. Of course, this was the privilege that only the three of them enjoyed. Even in terms of transportation, they were using the Bentley Bentayga in case they were going to and from the store and the apartment. Let's get going. You said that racing begins at 7? Jack asked as he entered the Bentley Continental GT. George got into the Bentley with a slight hint of hesitation on his face remembering Jack's crazy driving and replied, Yes boss. The racing will begin at 7 and registration will end at 6.45 p.m. Okay, put on that seatbelt. We're going. Currently, it's 45 minutes past 5. To get there, we'll need at least 30 minutes. So, sit tight. As Jack said this, he immediately began driving out of the palace before speeding towards Mount Bright. George who was already shaking within couldn't help but let out a slight smile while thinking to himself, you guys think that you're professional drivers? Here comes a real pro in driving, he he he. Jack drove the Bentley on the road. He had made sure to choose the roads that were free of traffic. In this way, although he was driving at an incredible speed. George began overcoming his fear and feeling the thrill going crazy while driving. Although he wasn't the one that was driving the car. At least he could enjoy the thrill of being in the passenger seat while seeing how things blurred as they passed them. Even as George enjoyed how Jack drove the car, and how fast as a Bentley Continental GT was, he didn't forget to think about the cause of his drop out of racing. Who clenched his fists as he thought to himself, although I'm not the one going to compete with you, there's someone who's even crazier than I when it comes to driving. Let me see how you're going to deal with this now. Even he thought of this who shifted his attention to Jack who was driving the car like it was something simple. One had to know that a Bentley Continental GT was a sports car. It can't be driven like all the other normal cars. In other terms, 
one had to be very experienced in driving so that he or she could drive the car at such a high speed on the highways. Jack don't drink too much of his driving skills as he was now going to complete the task that he was assigned to by the system so that he could get the professional driving skill fully. True to Jack's estimation, they arrived at Mount Bright after 30 minutes of driving. In other words they had arrived at the scene when it was already 6.15 p.m. George showed Jack the way to the parking area of those who were going to participate in the racing competition. After all, not all those that came to Mount Bright were going to participate in the competition. They were those who came just for fun, or those who came for betting. There was another group of people who came to support their favorite drivers. And not to forget the group of people who came here with the aim of making connections with the rich second generation that come here race. Upon seeing the Bentley Continental GT, the people in the crowd began making the wild guesses of who the owner of the car was. According to what they knew, all the rich second generation of Incoat City had already arrived at the scene. Do you think you can guess who the owner of that car is? Why don't you go ahead and do the guessing? Am I supposed to guess who the owner is when I can clearly see that this car is newly bought and it hasn't been a week since it was purchased? Furthermore, from my location there's no way that I can see who the driver is. I'm sitting right next to you. Then how do you expect me to guess who the person driving the car is when I can't see him either? Ha 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 I can already guess that there's a new person in our city. Maybe he's from another city and he has come here to have fun. Hey don't make wild guesses yet, you may not know who will be coming out of the car after it stops. It may be an old geezer who is here to cause trouble. Perhaps that's your dad and that's why you are so sure about it. Can you guys be serious, since when did old men start to fancy sports cars? Hee hee, you're right. As the fans and the betting maniacs began making their own speculations about who the new owner of the car was, the well-known rich second generation began making their way towards the parking lot. They were obviously curious about this newcomer. After Jack parked the car, he dismounted it alongside George. George was already familiar with this place and so, he began introducing Jack to what was supposed to be done or where he had to go if he needed something. The handsome appearance Jack immediately caught the eyes of the young ladies who had come here with their own aims. Wow, what a handsome guy. Do you think he can accept me to be his girlfriend? Look at yourself in the mirror before asking such a question. Yeah, that's right. Furthermore, do you even know if he has a girlfriend? It doesn't matter, I can be his side chick. Bah, you're not qualified to compete with me. Only I can be his side chick. Get lost, if not for your thick makeup, I'm sure that you wouldn't dare to be so thick skinned. Mike, me and you, we're done. I'm going to look for that Mr. Handsome to marry me. Faith, aren't we already engaged? You and who? I didn't accept the engagement, here's your ring. But you accepted my proposal back then, I was muddle headed back then. Ha ha ha, Mike, you've just been dumped by your girlfriend for a man that she's never seen before. Look at my girlfriend here, she didn't do something like. Hey Sam, from this moment on, just like she did, I'm dumping you as well. Hey are you serious? Ha ha ha. The crowd of young ladies had already began discussing who will be married by Jack. This immediately attracted the envious gazes of their admirers and dark faces of their boyfriends. Jack, who was just meeting the second generation of Incoat City didn't know that he had just caused the hearts of many boys to be broken or that he had just attracted the hatred of most of the boys. Look who it is, isn't this George? I didn't know that you'd be rich after leaving. A sarcastic voice echoed from the small crowd of the rich second generation youths. Jack looked at the group of young ladies and young men in front of him. They were draped in the recent fashion branded clothing and accessories. Since it was summer, there were some that had left parts of their skins exposed, mostly girls. Most of these youths were at the age of 17 to 25, and 25 was the highest that the group would accept, but even so, the younger ones mostly interacted amongst themselves. Young Master Ismael, long time no see, George replied. Although he tried to keep calm, Jack could see that George was angry. He wondered what was going on. But, he could still link all of this to George's retirement from racing. Humph, I thought that you won't be participating in racing again. As he spoke, he got to the front from behind the small crowd. He had short hair that was dyed yellow. He was wearing a branded trouser with a branded t-shirt. His handsomeness rating would be at 87. With his bulky body, it was obvious that he was building it by visiting a gym. He was Ismael Cruz. 
a member of the Cruz family in Incoat City. The Cruz family was one of the five biggest families found in Incoat City. In Incoat City, there were six families that led in business and assets in the city. The first five were Cruz, Radvon, Faro, Gator, and Sopona. These five families had almost the same assets and their competition was intense. Of course, although they were competing, it wasn't to the extent that they were enemies. Although they were competing, their younger generation were always hanging out together. Then, there was a family that, just like Alfonso family in Crystal City, had the most influence in Encoate City. It was the Raymond family. Most of the time, it was referred to as the overlord of Encoate City. Currently, all the members of the five big families were present. There were others from smaller families as compared to the big five, but they had assets worth at least a hundred million. From how Jack could see, it seemed that George and this Ismail had a history, but, he wasn't going to get involved as long as nothing overboard happened. I'm not here to race. It's my boss that's here to participate in the race. George replied with a proud voice. Even as he spoke, his nose was pointed to the sky subconsciously. The group of youths immediately stared at Jack and began scrutinizing him. From Jack's casual clothes, they couldn't find anything special about him apart from his handsome face. But, they knew that he wasn't someone simple considering the fact that he could afford to purchase the Bentley Continental GT. It was worth close to 10 million. Hello, I am William Farrow. A handsome youth stepped forward and stretched his hand to greet Jack. Hello, I'm Jack. Jack greeted back. His introduction simply mentioned his name and didn't mention what family he came from. William's intention of mentioning his family name was so that Jack could introduce his family, so that they could know where he came from. But, since Jack didn't introduce his background, William was forced to ask, What family are you from? Jack knew that this would happen. But all the same, he wouldn't use the name of the family that never treated him as part of them. So, he simply shook his head and said, I'm sorry but I can say anything about that. Upon hearing this, the crowd of youths immediately had their brows raised with interest. If a person could afford the car and couldn't mention his background, could he be a member of one of those hidden families? They were immediately interested with Jack's background, but, since he couldn't say anything about it, they decided not to ask for now. After all, they thought that as long as they got his trust, they would know. Okay then. George said that you're here to race. I guess that you're a professional. William immediately changed the topic. Nah, I'm just a beginner, Jack replied. This answer made George, who was standing beside him proudly while seeing the rich second gen of the city greeting his boss respectfully, nearly rolled his eyes. What beginner? If you're a beginner, then there are no drivers in the world, he thought to himself. Well, William was stumped on what to say next. Hello Jack, I'm Anderson Gator. You're here just at the right time, we're going to have our weekly race. The final prize is 5 million. You wanna join? Upon seeing that William couldn't speak anymore, a youth with brown eyes, shoulder-length black hair and handsomeness rating of 90 spoke. When Jack heard about the prize, he was immediately excited. With the system's multiplier, he would get 500 million, just enough for him to stabilize the grocery department. He was just about to reply when an arrogant voice came from the side, there's no need for him to participate. He has never participated in a race before. 